Good to have you, son. Thank you for having Absolutely. me, Papa. Absolutely. Thank you so Absolutely. much. It's such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, that's the, the, the power of life is that um, if the Holy Spirit lets you live, he has something that he saw you doing or saw you becoming or saw you saying or saw you acting out. And he is giving you that time to fulfill that vision that he has. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes, sound like you'll hear somebody say, like, um, they have a vision or, or, or the Lord has a vision for your life. But do you really know what a vision means? A vision means, because we have different type of visions. We got open visions. Mm -hmm. The Lord had an open vision about you before you came to the earth. Wow. Wow. So, so he saw you according to that open vision. Mm -hmm. So when Samuel um, was in the heavenlies, in the soul of God, when Hannah is praying for a child, the Lord is seeing prophecy come forth again to the earth. I'll prophesy again to men. I'll speak and tell them things all over again. That's what he saw Samuel doing. But watch, Samuel has to minister to God to come into agreement with that open vision that God had before he came to earth. So there's a part that everybody has to play where you have to come into alignment with what God saw in his vision about you. And if you don't do that, that vision that God has for you will never come to pass. Wow. If God doesn't see his vision concerning you come to pass, you leave him with a broken heart. Wow. And no matter how much he loves you, he'll still be unable to receive you into heaven because the way to get into the heavenlies, the eternal life, the book of eternal life um, also is after the book of works. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. You notice what the Bible says, every man shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the deeds, the works done in his body. Mm -hmm. So the works done in your body going to precede the book of life. So, so people's name in that book of life is because when they're investigated with the book of works, they have the works for the book of life. Wow. Oh, the book of eternal life. You notice they went and started casting out devils. Jesus sent them out. And when they rejoiced because the demons were subject to him, he said, don't rejoice over that. Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So they was looking at the works, but Jesus was looking at their name. Um, is going in, Their name is in that book right there of eternal life. And then there's another section, the Book of Works. Mm -hmm. So, and then in the book of Revelation, it says that um, every man shall be judged according to his works in the book of Revelation. So what you see there? What are what, wow. what you seeing about? It, it's, it's so powerful, Papa, how you say there's a book for your works. And, and then um, yesterday in the broadcast, you said um, that it's a, a scale where mm -hmm. your works are, mm -hmm. are, are measured and then they're going to be put in on, on the fire. To see if those works will stand. Uh -huh. If they stand, they were because they were from from Christ Jesus. Exactly. If they didn't stand, it's because it was fleshly. It was your your emotions. It was something that you didn't accomplish. How God is scheduled for you to do His will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there's things when when you don't get it right. And this is something powerful. The revelation that you have, Papa, about when God is not happy with a situation, with a decision. Right. With uh, with something in your life, he'll make sure it's a do over. Yeah. To see what's the outcome if you get it right this time. Yes. But a lot of people don't get it. No. Don't get it. They they keep getting the same result, and they keep getting frustrated with God. They mouth at God, and that's how you end up breaking his heart. 
Yes. Because you're proud. you proud that in you that you don't understand what God is trying to do in you. There is something in you that needs to change. Mm -hmm. And he needs to humble you. Mm -hmm. And these situations that he is cast for you, is for you to obtain victory and give him a pleasurable experience with you. In your decisions and your way of thinking in your words and there's no room for you to be sad why are you sad about it? why are you focusing on the negative things when you have life in your body to change mm. the day you see this revelation I brought it to light I brought it to understanding um, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says that the things that was not known has now been revealed through the holy apostles and prophets. Wow. Mm -hmm. The things that was unknown mm -hmm. to men. Uh, that's actually in Ephesians. I want to go there real quickly. Ephesians, you good, son. We can stay right there. And then uh, go to Ephesians Two, three. Uh, maybe you pop back a little bit. Okay. Well, Corinthians, go for it. Ephesians. But so many times, you're not recognizing that the moment that you're in right now is beneficial to you because you're getting a chance to bear fruit in the book of works. That's what by their fruits you shall know them. The fruits is their works what they did and so during that time when you deal with the book of works we have a we have a moment in time where we we actually are starting to um we're seeing the uh the materialization of you having an account in heaven of you doing what god says so that you can be celebrated do you know I'm going to tell you, it's going to be so amazing when, when a person enters into heaven. But there's different ceremonies in heaven. You want to be in the ceremony where you, you are being looked at for your prestige. Mm -hmm. And you're being rewarded because of what you did. Things that you accomplish. Son, as a prophet, you got to be strong because I know when somebody is going to fall away from God. I can see it. Mm. Wow. Oh, uh, one time I had a I, I, while I was sleeping, I was taking in a vision. I saw people falling away, and um, I remember the Holy Spirit said, "This person, this is what the Holy Spirit said. This person need to sow a seed. Wow. That's what's going to break what you just saw. Mm. So, um, I don't." I don't really like uh, give those instructions like that no more because you know we JHM has left that elementary realm but I went to the person and told them you have to sow this like now and um, when I went go pray for the person before I actually gave them that command the Holy Spirit said they need a seed mm -hmm. So when I teach on sewing, I'm not just teaching on sewing because I need um, some draws, you see. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Wow. I'm teaching on sewing because this is a life message that I'm giving to you. I understand what uh, the purpose, the effectiveness of what's going on. Like you need something to plug you into the Lord. That you can receive grace through the channel of your giving. And as a prophet, you have to be strong because you know when somebody going to fall away. Wow. Wow. You know when somebody, their time is not uh, forever. Mm -hmm. Wow. By the way, son, I haven't seen you in that bracket. Um, and I hope to never see you in that bracket. I hope so, too. And I haven't seen, uh, um, I haven't seen um, a lot of people that uh, are in the ministry right now. I haven't seen them in that bracket either. 
But oftentimes when somebody is about to fall away, they become silent. Wow. Wow. Their speech is taken away. Because demons silence you before they uh, violate you. Wow. Because as long as you're engaging the Lord, there's a, there's a ricochet of his uh, presence, your presence, his presence, your presence. And when that ricochet is not there, then it's like you're in a silent prison. Whoa. So when people are in a prison, they are not, they're not allowed to speak on the outside. Mm -hmm. They can write letters and stuff like that, but they're not allowed to speak on the outside. They become silent, wow. alienated from people. Mm -hmm. So when demons are ready to accomplish things in your life, they get you to stop talking. You notice, what did Jesus do with the, after the 40-day, 40 40-night 40 temptation? What was Jesus operating? Jesus is operating in what? Talking. Yes. <laughs> That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. His mouth is moving. Mm -hmm. He's not just like quiet and saying, you know, the Father going to keep me and I'm going to make it. He's talking. Wow. So, there's like people that have high levels of light. Like, I could tell you off the jump. Like, Sharika crazy, but she got high light. Mm -hmm. Wow. But she's a, she's, her personality was created to be bizarre. Mm, wow. That's it. She's a bizarre um, uh, uh, being. God made her with that personality. So even if she never had sin, she would still be like that. Wow. Wow. Meaning like God <clears throat> intended for her to always be like a, a excited, vibrant type person. Mm. Like, so when God created Sharika, he thought about somebody that would, like, electrify uh, with, like, having an electric-type personality. Wow. There's many people in this ministry that got that, by the way. But I'm just giving you an example. Mm -hmm. Now, it has to be moderated because Sharika <laughs> would say something stupid. You know, mm -hmm. you give her the microphone. I mean, the little microphone <laughs> at, a, at a conference. She just say something stupid. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yes. you got to moderate her and train her into using the microphone and <laughs> saying the right thing. Yes. Yeah, because, <laughs> because last conference, I <laughs> gave her the microphone and Sarika started saying some so, so crazy stuff on there. Mm hmm. <laughs> and start saying some crazy stuff. So, um, here's the thing: with the personality that everybody has from God, it has to be narrated by God, because mm -hmm. Satan will intercept it mm -hmm. wow. and take that personality for evil sake. Wow. So there's things that God gives you that do get intercepted by demons, mm -hmm. and then it becomes an evil thing. So. What's the secret about Saul, who became Apostle Paul? When he was persecuting the church, that persecution he has in him is for principalities. Mm -hmm. But he's persecuting who? The sons of God. Mm -hmm. wow. But the persecution he has in his belly is for the principalities. Wow. So God has to knock him out. Mm -hmm. And he becomes what? Unconscious. Unconsciousness. Unconsciousness means to break the memory covenant Whoa. of doing evil. Mm -hmm. His muscle memory was to do things that God hated. When God knocks him out, he becomes unconscious. Yes, physical unconsciousness. But I'm saying the spiritual realm of this unconsciousness is everybody has to become unconscious of their former temptations, mm -hmm. which is really the knowledge that they allow themselves to be opened up to. Wow. Wow. What you see there? That's powerful, Baba. A lot of people experience the same thing. They're fighting the prophet. They're fighting their apostle. But the fight is against those demons that are trying to disconnect you from your prophet, from your apostle. Every instruction, everything that is given to you is for you to stay connected to God. Every instruction is for your protection. 
when the prophet say you need to see this sow this seed is because you don't know what evil mm -hmm. it's on the earth it's for your protection and you need to fight the good fight of faith to stay connected with your apostle you might see a gesture or something and, and, and your mind automatically starts fighting your prophet start saying see look he didn't acknowledge you he didn't say hello or anything he and didn't he, mention your name on the line the name the what line. about me <laughs> yeah why Sharika <laughs> <laughs> So, so now you're giving a demon an opportunity to <laughs> capitalize on what they send to do to destroy you and disconnect you. <laughs> <laughs> you remember I was teaching, I was teaching Juan and Seaver about the subconscious. I, I did a little teaching on the subconscious to you and you have heard me talk about the subconscious here and there. But the subconscious deals with an avenue of everybody's brain where you hear something or you see something and you store it in you unknowingly. And it often comes out in an argument. Mm. It comes out in a time where you're offended. It comes out in a time when you're depressed. That's why if you ever seen two couples arguing, them niggas all the way 17 years ago, I remember 17 years ago, you gave them that pickle. <laughs> That's why you gave them the pickle, because you, you wanted <laughs> so, so how do people locate stuff that are so far gone in information? Because that person, before you ever had an argument, they were smiling with you. Mm -hmm. That wasn't an issue. But how does it become an issue in the argument? Because the subconscious was holding that evil. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people right now that they think that they love a person that's in their presence and they don't. Wow. Because you have not even dug deep enough in the subconscious that's carrying hatred for them. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So let me give you an example. Look at little children. When you're cleaning their diapers, when you're feeding them, when you're giving them a bath, brushing the teeth, whatsoever, you're teaching them things, whatever, you're driving them to school, whatever you're doing, how is it that when they get older, that same mouth that used to say, Mama, Dada, that same mouth would tell you, No, I, you, you won't let me go out. Why are you stopping me? Everybody's going out. You don't want me to have fun. This is what children... Why does that mouth start blah, 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 blah? That was in the subconscious for years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when you hold in that little child and, and, and you have to you have to be the one driving out that subconscious. That's why I'm telling you, if you have little children, you have to teach them the word. You have to spend time with them and talk to them about the spirit world. You have to let them know that every voice that they hear is not from God. You got to tell them sometimes when they're in public, turn your face. Don't watch that. Don't look at that person. Don't say nothing here. Don't dance to the music in the store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, they, they, you start hearing stuff, you know, um, and the music playing and people dancing in the store and the music sound catchy and you watch over, you see somebody start dancing and you got to teach your child early. Stop dancing. Isn't it funny though? The body want to move to everything. It want to. It want to conform to whatever's being presented to it. So it starts early. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the subconscious needs to be protected by the parent, because the parent is the one that's deciding the avenues in which the child sees things and hears things. And so, I'm showing you something powerful. Judas had things in his subconscious. Mm -hmm. He already was a thief. He already was a, um, a troublemaker. This is in his subconscious, but when he gets a position from God Almighty, it's more visible for everybody to see, and it's also more visible for him to see because God is light. 
which means that when God comes, whatever is in the dark becomes exposed. Wow. Wow. If God is light, you could be inside of a room. If it's dark, you won't know everything in the room. You could fill a table, you could fill a refrigerator, you could fill a cabinet, you could fill a couch, but you're not sure until you turn the lights on and see, okay, this is a couch. This is a refrigerator. Okay, this is a kitchen. This is a bathroom. Light brings the reality of everything that's in a room. How many times have you turned off the lights and you put your phone down somewhere specifically and then you still didn't know where your phone was? Wow. <laughs> you touch it. No, nah, baby, I, no, go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. <laughs> just a joke. You know, sometimes I mess with one because one, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> But you still reaching for something that you know was in distance. Mm -hmm. But why you can't find it? You have to actually turn on the lights. Or you ever been in a dark room? You know that you pit something somewhere and you reaching for it and you need to put on a little bathroom light just to see where it's at. Mm -hmm. yes, why? It's exposed with light. Even though you knew it was there, you really know where it's at located when you put lights on. That's the same way with the heart. Mm -hmm. When Jesus comes, I heard the Holy Spirit singing that song before I got on here. When Jesus comes, the tempest power is broken. When Jesus comes, all fear is wiped away. He takes your gloom. And fills your life with glory. All has changed when Jesus comes to say. And the thing about it is, Jesus, when he enters somebody's life, what they had in their subconscious has no choice but to come out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, in the hour when things come out of you, sometimes a person will be like, well, I'm not that type of person. Mm -hmm. No, you didn't ever acknowledge yourself as that type of person. Mm -hmm. But when light comes, mm -hmm. it shines on whatever is dark. Mm -hmm. you're, but here's the crazy thing, son. If you're in darkness, how do you expect the effect of light mm -hmm. to happen on your soul where you can see things? Mm -hmm. Darkness don't see. So if you're living in the realm of darkness with your life, there's a lot of dark stuff in your subconscious that you can never identify with. Mm -hmm. But when light comes, that's when you can see. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's when you can see. Yes. It's a perfect example when you were saying about the phone, you leave it in the dark mm -hmm. and you can't see it. The person that said, I'm not that type of person, Mm -hmm. Is that person that yeah. needs help? Yeah. Because why would you defend yourself? Mm -hmm. You know there's something in there in your heart. You know it's there, but you need light to expose it. Yeah. So there's no need for you if, if you if you need to say, well, I'm not that type of person. I'm the humblest person ever. I'm not proud. That means you are proud. So I mean, that's the classic humble. phrase of everybody. And it, I'm the most nicest person you ever met. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why you one, one said yeah, but he said nigga. <laughs> <That's Yeah. what laughs> but but son, isn't it crazy how mm -hmm. that happens? Mm -hmm. Some uh, people's <clears throat> people's people's statements are so um Narcissistic. Mm. I'm the most calmest person ever, but if you get on my nerves, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You just said you're the most mm. calmest person ever. Right, right. So if somebody gets on your nerves, being the calmest person ever shouldn't even affect you. Right. <laughs> 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 you you know you know you know you sound like a mechanic. 
You sound like a mechanic. Because mechanics, you get to there and they find stuff that's not even realistic. <laughs> <laughs> you talk to me. You talk to a mechanic long enough, he done move from <laughs> he done move from the vehicle. He have to tell him, well your knee look like it got dead inside. <laughs> I got the perfect remedy for that. I got the perfect remedy for that. I got a knee exercise just for that. <laughs> and knock the crips out of that And 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 a lot of times what people have to recognize is that. God loved you despite all that you had inside of you. He kept you alive. So when he comes to the area and start revealing that to you, why rob him of that investment of mercy and try to protect that? Mm -hmm. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Let it happen. <laughs> let's just, <laughs> let's just let it happen. Yeah. Why, why hold on to it? Because... Remember, God been waiting for all of those years. Imagine, everybody's wait time is different. There's some people 50 years old, son. So God was waiting four decades plus, five decades, to see what he saw in his vision. So it's really important that you, 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 you really... What exercise are you doing today to soften your heart mm -hmm. for the truth? Wow. What are you doing to soften your heart for the truth? There's a difference when somebody, you produce your own accolades and your own righteousness and you declare, you know, I'm this and this and this and this. And then there's a difference when the Lord, when you start being inspired by the Holy Ghost in your prayers Lord, everything that you don't like about me, I want to get rid of that. I want to know you. When you, did you know that somebody, if they really slow down and take a breath and you tell the Lord, Lord, I really want to know who you are. I really want to be your friend and I really want you to smile on my choice making, my thoughts, my ways. If somebody prays like that, God will draw near to you and he'll listen. Mm -hmm. And he'll sit at your feet. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. Because he, that's the moment that he's been waiting for. That's the moment that he's been longing for. Everything that um, you have. When you have extreme blessings, it's because the Father is longing for extreme sacrifices. There's nothing wrong with sacrifice. It's been taken out of context because the Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. But we was dealing with Saul, who was a king, who was given the instruction. He disobeyed the instruction. He wasn't obedient. And then he said, let me sacrifice unto God with something that God there asked. So oftentimes, uh, people throw that statement out, but some of these biblical statements, they had a cause and effect to it. The cause was that Saul was disobedient. The effect, God was telling him, even what you sacrificed to me is not what I asked for. I asked for this. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with sacrifice. As a matter of fact, sacrifice is actually the path to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's the path to your freedom, your wisdom, your prosperity, your abundance, your health. So you'll have to be in sacrifice mode um, to keep your pursuit of God. Then you have to be in sacrifice mode when you get into the mode of worship. You have to be in sacrifice mode for prayer. You got to be in sacrifice mode for seed. You got to be in sacrifice mode for studying the word. Mm -hmm. You have to be in sacrifice mode to serve. Because when you're serving, it's not so much about your preference, it's about the other person's preference. Mm -hmm. yes. What would you do if you went to a restaurant and the person said, I already prepared your food, I, I, th I like this, so I think you should have it. And they say, well, here's the tab. <laughs> it's 55 <laughs> 
what would you do? You would go crazy in your mind. Mm -hmm. And they tell you, you can't leave or we'll call the cops because we already cooked the food and you already breathed the halitosis on it. <laughs> <laughs> you breathe mold, mold on the food already, so we can't take it back. Think about that, son. What's going to happen? Wow. You will get infuriated. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice is so amazing when you're serving because you don't let yourself get involved. And you recognize this is for someone else. Mm -hmm. This is for someone else. It's not for me. So let me make sure that they get the greatest experience out of this. Yes. The power of Ruth, son, is that Ruth went inside of Boaz's chamber and Naomi trained her to sacrifice for his pleasure. Mm -hmm. wow. So Ruth didn't go in there and say, hey, 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 hey. I like, I like um, hot sauce on my burrito, baby. <laughs> What Ruth went inside there and then she was like, I'm now making myself available to learn of you. Mm -hmm. wow. I want to know what you like. I want to know what you desire. I want to know what you crave. And son, we talking about Boaz. Mm -hmm. Boaz could get any woman. Mm -hmm. But Boaz was willing to lay aside all of that privilege he had and all of that power he had to say, this Ruth, I'm going to crown your head to be, I'm going to crown your brain to be a part of <laughs> the choice reward, the choice promotion, the choice position, a selection of superiority. But it was sacrifice. When you sacrifice, you have to recognize that the eye of God is looking at your sacrifice and seeing you do it. And there's power reserved that God can now get to you through that sacrifice. Many times God can't get the power to you because there's no sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Do you know everybody knows when you have not done anything towards your own health, your own mental health? Mm -hmm. You know. If you go all day, you don't say, thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You don't, you don't. There's nothing that you have done for your mental health. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So you, everybody knows to some degree, you're conscious of the sacrifices you make, even with time. You know if you didn't sacrifice with time. Because one thing that happens when you watch a lot of things, son, is that you actually become empty. You don't become full. Mm -hmm. wow. If you get full of information from everywhere, you end up empty. Mm -hmm. wow. That's the deception. Mm -hmm. wow. If you get full from everywhere, you become deceived. Mm -hmm. Or you become uh, vacant. Mm -hmm. Think about that. The accumulation of knowledge from every place actually leaves you empty. Mm -hmm. wow. So we have a lot of wounded religious people mm -hmm. because they go from prophet to prophet listening and they're trying to get something. Mm -hmm. And then when they get around one prophet, prophesy to me. <laughs> and they get around another prophet, they're looking for miracles. They look around another prophet, they listen for teaching, revelation, and they, they, they're going all over the place. And the end result is emptiness. Because God didn't even build you as a woman to be doing that. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> he didn't even build you as a man to take all of that. You're taking it in a lot of people. <laughs> That's a lot of shots. <laughs> That's a lot of chitty, chitty, bang, bang. <laughs> it's not even normal. It's not even possible. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Time, son, just think about it. How many times have we seen where a person, um, even people that are literal prostitutes, they take breaks. <laughs> <laughs> What? 
Why do you think they take breaks? <laughs> <laughs> let it breathe. Let it breathe. <laughs> it's not normal. And, and um, what happens is we have people becoming sick off of spiritual knowledge. Mm, wow. That's deep. Mm-hmm. Did not the Pharisees know the law? Mm -hmm. They knew what Moses taught. Mm -hmm. Spiritual knowledge. Saints, remember the law came from God because God was attempting to restrain the people because they were so lawless. Mm -hmm. So the law was to give them a knowledge that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not kill. Okay, they was already killing, but thou shalt not kill is revealing to you killing is wrong. So the law in itself, it was still coming from God. But it wasn't his desire. Because remember, if I'm a police officer coming to your neighborhood to calm down a situation, diffuse a situation, and I'm given different strategies, that's not my best. Mm -hmm. My best is that I could not have to come in place all of these different strategies and everybody will walk in love and maturity towards each other. You see? Mm -hmm. So me coming there and be like, you know, don't do this. Don't go, don't go scratch their window at 3 a.m., dog. <laughs> don't be acting like you, Sabrina, teenage witch, like you got broomstick. Don't be up there throwing wine bottles and then running back to your house. See, I'm setting down things because of the disorder and the chaos that's in operation. Mm -hmm. It's still from me. Mm -hmm. wow. You see that? Mm -hmm. But it's not my best because I would rather you not even throw the bottles. So I don't have to go into strategies to make you aware that throwing bottles is wrong. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, when they bring the woman caught in the act of adultery, they're talking about Moses' law. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of spiritual knowledge, but they're sick. Wow. A lot of people have spiritual knowledge, and the spiritual knowledge is making them sick. You're hearing things. You're hearing things from this person, this person, this, this location, and it's killing you. That's why in the Word of God, there's a scripture in Proverbs. This is so powerful. It says, drink from your own sister. I'm going to find it. In Proverbs chapter 5, look at verse 15. What does it say? Drink out of thine own cistern. And running waters out of thine own well. I'm going to read this one more time. Drink waters out of thine own cistern. And running waters out of thine own well. Everybody has a well. And everybody has a cistern. But... What, how men are becoming sick religiously is that they're hopping from cistern to cistern to cistern and they're running to next well, next well, next well. Wow. There's people, after I finish this broadcast, they're they on to the next broadcast. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> <clears throat> and if I come back live, they're going to leave that broadcast and come back. <laughs> And I appreciate that, dog. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> but, well, anyhow, because it's after I was, um, Still, you want your cistern and your well that is ordained by God to be giving you the water. Mm -hmm. Because let me, let, let, me, let me show you what happens if I'm going from cistern to cistern to cistern. That waters be, become Flint, Michigan waters inside of me. <laughs> it becomes sewage. Wow. Wow. 
how many of you all will go to the sewage right now and go get get a cup, a plastic cup from Walmart and go put it in the sewage and go spill it up and, and get you a straw? <laughs> How many of y'all would do that? How many of y'all would drink some sewage water? Huh? Okay, look at that, son. Nobody would drink the sewage water mm -hmm. according to what is obvious. Mm -hmm. But they drink sewage according to leaving the straight and narrow path for their life. Wow. 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 Let every man drink from his own sister and waters from his own well. That's what Proverbs is talking about. It's saying, I'm going to give you a sister. I'm going to give you a well so that the waters, the rivers, the revelation that comes out of this, it will propel you and you'll go forward. And see, many people can't go forward because watch this here. If we giving the purest kind of water, and you go listen to somebody with contaminated water, your soul gonna get sick while the water that we give make you well. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so what, what be going on oftentimes, if we dealing with religion or a person in a religious operation, everything that we do with the water is undone mm -hmm. because they're still going to go search for other waters wow. that have worms in it. Whoa. They have other waters that's creating sickness. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's other waters. So that's why Jesus was telling the woman at the well, if you drink of my water, you'll never thirst again. Mm -hmm. She was a water drinker. And all that water she was drinking was making her sick, right? <laughs> all that water was making her sick. So it, now, what rhymes with sick? No. Let's go back to <laughs> Yeah, because don't, don't disregard that question because it's not going. You're not going to catch it the way I'm trying to get you to catch it. <laughs> now... <laughs> What do you see in this evaluation of what Jesus is telling this woman? You have five different wells mm. that you thought was going to bring the soul where it imagined. Mm. You got five different wells that you thought that if I engage these wells, it's going to bring the satisfaction that I fantasized about. Wow. And all of them didn't do it. Wow. And he's saying now, draw specifically from my sister. Mm. My well. <laughs> <laughs> so we going to say about that. Look at uh, Ephesians chapter 3 right here. Now, so read that verse, um, read this uh, verse 4. Verse 4. Whereby. Whereby, when ye read, ye might understand my knowledge in the my. In the mystery of Christ. In the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> in the mystery. No, no that's not separate words. <laughs> This is Apostle Paul talking right here. He's saying, <laughs> when you read and understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So he's talking about, I have this knowledge from all the mysteries that the Lord revealed to me. Now, what is saying that, uh, verse 5? Verse 5. Which, <laughs> which are the ages, ages was not made known unto sons of men as it is. <laughs> As it is now revealed unto his holy apostle, 
and prophets by the Spirit. So now, it's saying that this mystery was not understood or spoken about in other ages. Mm -hmm. But it's being revealed through the uh, holy apostles and the prophets. Mm -hmm. wow. Just think about this. So, saints, there's things that I teach you that this is a mystery of Christ. I have the authority to tell it to you now. You try to trace it back to your religious gatherings, what you study and stuff like that. No, 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 no. No more closed doors. Against that voice be deep, like they go from no more clothes. I think this guy's cut his son. The cut his son of Rito did his sister. And you think mm -hmm. it's somebody big, right. it's a swamp. <laughs> Around, you think it's seven foot tall, it's three foot seven. <laughs> yeah. Where you go? Oh, you die? Okay, yeah, I won't call that side. Now, so just think about it. The Bible says that it has been revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the Spirit on purpose don't be talking about certain things because he reserved the information for the apostle that he picked for you. Mm. Wow. wow. So he wants you to drink from their cistern, from their well, so he'll hide it from you. Now, and look what the Bible says. It says in other ages it was not revealed. Mm -hmm. It was not made known. Mm -hmm. There are people right now, what's their age? Some people are 40 here. Mm -hmm. Some people are 38, 39, 37, 28. Some people are 20. Some people are 21. Some people are 60s. Some people are in the 70s. Watching me right now. So they have different ages. Mm -hmm. We often think about age and we say, well, that, that was before I came on the scene. But what's your age? Mm -hmm. You have ages of your life on earth here. There are things during the ages of your life that you did not know because God was saying, I'm going to eventually connect with you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at you through the phone, through your laptop, through your YouTube, through your Facebook. I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to finally reveal it to you at the appointed time. My spirit going to finally unfold this to you. Wow. Wow. So as a blessing, when you have your prophet in your life, this is what's being opened up to you. This is what you... Now, what do you think about once you start believing your prophet, what do you think starts to happen with that revelatory information? Do you think that now the person has supernatural abilities imparted to them to now walk in those? Yes. Yes. Because as you said, um, when you believe your prophet, the angels are working with that prophet. They start working with you as well. So now you have the abilities and the, the mind mm -hmm. to to receive and mm -hmm. walk in that freedom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were some things in Elisha's age that he does not know. And God is telling Elijah, go anoint him in your place. Mm -hmm. And during the age of Elijah in Elisha's life, he's now in the age in the dispensation of knowledge, of mysteries. Mm -hmm concerning how to be a prophet because he did not know how to be a prophet. He said, God said to Elijah, go anoint him in your place. So the office that Elijah is, is actually a territory. Mm. A prophet 
when you hear office, there's an actual office and we can take supplies, word of knowledge. We could take supplies, word of wisdom. We could take supplies, working of miracles, gifts of healings. We could take supplies, discernment, discretion, knowledge, wisdom. We can take supplies from our office. If you look at an office, now what did Elisha, um, the Shunammite woman, she not only want to build a place in a, a, a big house for Elisha, but she said she wanted to put a desk. Mm -hmm. wow. She wanted to give him a what? Office. A office. Wow. Like because she had a revelation that he had a what? She had in her mind, let me build an office because she had a revelatory understanding of his office. Wow. She wanted to put an office in her house where he could come. And what did she want? She not only wanted him to be fed in his office. She not only wanted him to be able to write in his office, but she wanted him to go to sleep in his office. Wow. That means that she wanted him to fulfill his office with ease, with comfort and with joy. Wow. And if I take you further in this, when you are now respecting the anointing of the office of your prophet, not only are they pulling supplies to give to you, you could go inside of the draw and pull supplies of prosperity. You could pull supplies of wisdom. You could pull supplies of strength and authority. Because what did Elisha says? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Wow. And before he struck the waters, he's saying, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He's saying, let me go into the office of Elijah mm -hmm. and let me pull the supplies that causes this water to divide from hither to thither. Mm -hmm. Hither to thither. <laughs> Wow. Pow, pow, pow. 